we have a great fundamentals today, and that would be Car Audio Basic Math Gain Settings. Ooh. One of the most common questions we get is, how do I set my gains? What do I do? How do I get them to work? Well, there are ways to do it without having a DD1, without having a oscilloscope, and that is using math. Definition of math. That stuff you never thought you would need after high school. You were wrong. You definitely need it for car audio. Box building, equalization, and gain settings. These are three examples of things you can do with math in car audio. This is Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law is... Sorry, I don't know why I was making that noise. Ohm's Law is the preferred chart of mathematical equations that we use in the 12 volt world. Uh, with this chart we can find out as you can see watts, amps, volts, and ohms. Where it gets confusing is P for watts, I for amps, E for volts, and R for ohms. P stands for power which kind of makes sense with watts. I stands for current intensity. I didn't get that one either. Uh, volts is electrical current and ohms is resistance so that's why we have PIER. Now what we're gonna try to find out today is how to what we're gonna well hold on let's go to the next slide. What we're gonna try to figure out today is how much voltage we should be getting out of our amplifier on a 500 watt amp. There's two things that we need. If we go back to the ohms chart right over here, so we want to know voltage, so that's going to be E. We want to do this guy right here, because we know power, which is 500 watts, because we're going to be doing 500 on that, and we know R, which is resistance. So what we've put over here is number numbers we need. We know it's a 500 watt amp, and we're going to be running at two ohms. So we write our power, 500 watts, resistance, two ohms. We don't know E, which is AC voltage, which is what we want to figure out. And for this, we don't need to know the amperage. Now keep in mind, when doing this, you have to assume that the amplifier you're going to be setting up this way actually produces the power they say it does. So if it says it's a 500 watt amp and it has a 35 amp fuse on it, rest assured it's probably not, or it's going to be close. Eh. So. Keep that in mind. Uh, also, a thing to keep in mind too is that amplifiers aren't always as efficient as they say they are. But this is a good way to do it. It'll get you at least in the ballpark of how to set up your gains. Um, if you use a zero, we'll get to that in a second. All right, so the equation as and such. Volts measure in AC, the square root of watts times ohm, or P times R. The equation looks like this. The square root of 500 times 2 is 1,000. The square root is going to equal 31 point, that long number there, volts. All right, That's the number we're going to look for. That's what we want to see on our digital multimeter. This is a tool you are going to need. If you don't have a digital multimeter and you're, and you're trying to do anything in 12 volts, well, you know what, just stop watching now and like call it a day because you have to have one of these. You can get one of these at the cheap tool store for like nothing. Uh, yes, these, these are actually all in a playlist. We'll get to that in a minute, David. You need a digital multimeter. The target voltage is gonna be 31.62 volts. Set to AC, which is the squiggly line above the V. Play a test tone from a source connected to the amp. This is important. The test tones you can download from Kicker's website, Rockford's website, just about every amplifier manufacturer of note has these test tones for you to download. High test tone is going to be somewhere around 1000 Hz. The reason why I say at the bottom factory radios may need to change those frequencies is because if there is a factory radio it is not going to be a flat output. It could possibly have some equalization done to it, meaning it could be lower or higher than the frequencies around it. So for that, you may want to keep that in mind when setting up a gain. You might want to try and see what it looks like at 1,000 hertz, 8,000 hertz, as well as 250 hertz, just to get a good idea. For subwoofers, especially on a factory radio, 40 hertz 
There could be a ton of bass roll off in that. So make sure you adjust accordingly. You may want to try it at 40 Hertz, 50 Hertz, just to get an idea of what that looks like. All right, turn radio up to max on distorted volume. That's gonna vary depending on the radio that you have. It's off. Okay, that's fine. All right. Next, turn up gain until the digital multimeter displays the correct voltage. What we've done here is the speakers are not connected to the amplifier, so the positive and negative of the digital multimeter go in. As you can see here, we have the, uh, we have the red going into the positive, the black going into the negative. Our source unit, we are using one of our favorite test tools. If you want to get one for your phone, we recommend picking up the Educar. Uh, it's like 20 bucks for the app, but it does a lot. It has pink noise, it has test tones. It, it's like the ultimate test tone generator for your setup device. Anyways, play the negative 40, or I'm sorry, play your frequency. Negative 5 dB is good for sub, I'm sorry, for mids and highs. Negative 5 or 10 are good for your subwoofer. If you know, if you think your subamp can do it, turn the gain up until you hit that target voltage, and you're done. That's it. Now you've got your amplifier set up and you can rock out. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. I hate math, don't worry about it. Kicker, being Kicker, being nice guys that they are, they have made you a cheat sheet. If you go to kicker.com, type in, go to the support tech tab across the top, go down to where it says tech papers, you're gonna see right close to the top, because it's in alphabetical order, amp output voltage chart. This is what you'll find. This chart here, all you have to do is simply pick the power you want from across the top, pick the subwoofer impedance that you're gonna be using, do the little XY thing and come down. So if we go to 500 watts and we come down 31.62 volts, magically it's the same that we had here, 31.62 volts. This is just the math that they use to get to that. That's it guys, that's all you gotta do. This will get you very close. This will get your gains better than just guessing.